In previous videos, we have discussed what regression is and how to interpret the regression coefficients. In this video, we are going to understand what are the assumptions that must be fulfilled before we can use OLS regression. So let's get started. On the screen, you would see some basic regression model where wage is our dependent variable and it is function of education and experience of an individual plus an error term. If we run the equation using some real life data, we will get these numbers. Now in this video, I am assuming that you are already familiar with the interpretation of these numbers. If not, then I suggest you watch my previous videos. Now we can only rely on these numbers if the assumptions that we are going to discuss in this video holds. If the regression assumptions do not hold, then these numbers are misleading and interpre interpreting these number would lead to a wrong conclusion. So let's explore these regression assumptions. Let me first list down these assumptions, then we will explore each of them in detail. The first assumption is linearity. It says that the model should be linear in parameters. Then we have homoscedasticity assumption, which states that the variance of error term should be constant. The no multicollinearity assumption, it states that the explanatory variables should not be correlated with each other. No autocorrelation, that is the error term should not be correlated with other error terms and this assumption mostly is important for time series data. Then we have the normality assumption. This assumption states that the error term should be normally distributed. That is to say that the error term should have a bell-shaped curve or distribution. Non-constant x. Now most of the books will take this assumption as obvious and will state uh, will not state it. But in this video, we are going to explicitly state this assumption. The assumption says that variables should vary. That is, they must not be constant. Again, this assumption is also normally not stated. The assumption states that the number of observations should be greater than the number of explanatory variable or parameters in the equation. Endogeneity. The assumption demands that the explanatory variable or the independent variable should not be correlated with the error term. And lastly, we have the regression equation should have a correct functional form. Let's dive deeper into the linearity assumption. So here we have our y-axis, the x-axis. On y-axis, we have our dependent variable or the outcome variable which in this case is wage. On x-axis we have our independent variable or the predictor variable which in this case is education. Now for the sake of simplicity we are just assuming one predictor variable but the same idea can be extended for more than one predictor variables. We have a bunch of observations which we have collected and let's call them observed values. And we have our fitted line. Now this line represents that there is a linear relationship between education and wage. And by linear we mean that the relationship is represented by a straight line. Now when we talk about linearity, it would be more fruitful if we divide it into two parts. So a model can be linear in variables or it can be linear in parameter. Linearity in variables mean that the variable must have a power of 1 only. That is, 
it do not have any exponent neither a square root or a variable is not multiplied or divided by any other variable for example in this equation we have two variables that is the variable x and the variable y they just have a power of 1 so this equation is linear in variables but consider this equation x has a power of 2 so it is not linear in variables what about this equation there is an exponent but the exponent is not on variable it is on parameter so this equation is also linear in variables now what about this one so you would probably guess it right the variable is in reciprocal form so again this model is not linear in variable moving towards the linearity in parameters you would have probably grasp the idea that an equation or model will be linear in parameter if the parameters have the power of 1 only the same rules that we have applied on variables so in this first equation uh, it is linear in parameter and it is also linear in variable the second equation is also linear in parameter although it is not linear in variable but this equation will be called a linear equation in parameter this third equation is not linear in parameters and this fourth is linear in parameters so let's test your knowledge what about this equation you probably have guessed it correctly it is neither linear in variable nor linear in parameters so according to this assumption the model should be linear in parameter it may or may not be linear in variable but it must be linear in parameters to fulfill this assumption so if we draw four quadrants based on whether a variable is linear or not and whether a parameter is linear or not a model will be called a linear regression model if it is linear in parameters irrespective whether it is linear in variable or not a model will be called non-linear regression model if it is not linear in parameter irrespective of whether it is linear in variable or not these non-linear regression models will be dealt with in our advanced series for now we will just focus on linear regression models so we move forward to our second assumption which is normality again sticking to our previous example we have our dependent variable of wage on y-axis and the independent variable of education on x-axis and we have different observations for different values of education so this individual earns higher wage for the same level of education as compared to this individual now in this normal scenario on the right side of the screen you would see that your data looks like this these two graphs are essentially same there are multiple axes between x1 and x2 we have just simplified the graph to illustrate a point okay so we have our fitted line that passes through the center of the observations and the distance between each observation and the fitted line is error there are some positive errors and some negative errors but these error terms are normally distributed around the estimated value so positive and negative error term would cancel each other and for each value of x the mean value of the error term is equal to 0 and symbolically it's written as expected value of the error term given xi or for each value of x is equal to 0 or simply put the expected value of error term is 0 
and that's why in some books it is called zero mean value of disturbance but what's the intuition behind this assumption we know that the error term holds the effect of other variables that are not explicitly considered in the model so if the sum of error term is zero then the error term is not affecting the mean value of y so in short this assumption requires that the error terms should be normally distributed let's move to the assumption of homoscedasticity let's consider a new example in this example the dependent variable is expenditure and the independent variable is income we have our observations and the fitted line so there is a positive relationship between income and expenditure as income increases so do expenditure and the error term seems to be normally distributed so this satisfies the normality assumption but you would notice that the variability or the dispersion in expenditure is not the same at different levels of x or income to make this difference in variance clear let's draw a residual plot residual plot is just a graph that shows residual or the error term on the vertical axis and the independent variable on the x axis and we draw the residual in a way that the horizontal line represents the point zero of the graph positive residuals are above the line and negative residuals are below this line so we have tilted the graph on the left side in a way that the fitted line becomes horizontal you would notice that the dispersion of residual is not equal at different values of x this is the violation of homoscedasticity assumption the homoscedasticity assumption requires that the variance be equal for different values of x so the residual plot should look like this the dispersion of residual for different values of x is same hence there is homoscedasticity so homo means same and scedasticity refers to variance hence homoscedasticity means same variances in simple words the variation around the regression line is the same across different values of x the variation neither increases nor decreases as x varies the violation of homoscedasticity assumption is called heteroscedasticity that is hetero means different and scedasticity stands for variances hence different variances coming back to our example of income and expenditure this shows that in higher income group the expenditure can be higher or lower because they have a choice either to increase or decrease the expenditure but in lower income group the variation in expenditure is lower because this group do not have choice to increase or decrease expenditure now what is the intuition behind this assumption when the variances are not equal then not all the expenditure coming from different values of income will be equally reliable the observations are quite closer closely distributed around mean in case of x1 so they are more reliable but in case of x3 the values are distantly distributed hence they are not as reliable as x1 in different books you will find different terminologies in some books heteroscedasticity is also called constant variance or equal variance assumption and that makes sense because this assumption require that variance or error be same irrespective of the values of x so symbolically we can say that variance of y given x should be equal to sigma square or the variance is equal to sigma square 
and the violation of this assumption would be called heteroscedasticity which can be symbolically written as variance of y given x is equal to sigma square with a subscript of i and this subscript of i with sigma square means that the variance is different for different values of x or in short we can write it in this way please click on subscribe button and hit the bell icon you will get a notification as soon as we upload a new video also leave a comment in the comment box below for a recommendation or any suggestions that you would like to give